Hey everyone, I am bound and determined to bring spring in. It's snowing outside, but I'm going to smash a little color into my art studio today. And I'm going to show you how I did this mallet smash and turn this into this. First I prime my board with some wood sealer and then some acrylic paint. I go ahead and tape off the back. And then using that same white acrylic paint mixed with Floetrol and some plain old water, I get it to a consistency that's fairly thin, pour it out of my board, and pour it off. You want this first layer of white to be fairly thin when you're working with smashes or string poles or whatnot. This takes a little bit of patience to slowly work all that excess paint off of your board. And once you get it nice and smooth, I go ahead and take my drippings and I work it around the sides so it's all an even white coat. And then I quickly move over with my little culinary torch just to pop any bubbles that have been mixed into the paint. And this isn't any specific orange. I mix and match my paints to get the color I want using anything from golden to really inexpensive craft paints. So we're going in with an orange and all of my colors are mixed with the acrylic paint, Floetrol, and a little bit of water. I don't use any silicone because when I resin these I don't want to have to deal with the oily residue that sometimes interferes with my nice fine resin coat. I'm working with five colors today with our orange, yellow, teal, a bright springy green, and some pink. And you can see I'm just laying my colors kind of right next to each other, overlapping a little bit before we go in with the mallet. Now the fun part, go ahead and take your mallet and give it a good whack. Make sure that you clean off your mallet in between smacks or you could get some muddy in up of your paint colors. And don't worry if you've hit it too hard like I just did and you leave kind of a dry spot because we're going to fill it in and smash it again. This is all about having fun and letting go and the results can turn out pretty phenomenal. Now I'm generally not one to just give it a smack and let it go. I like to work my pieces quite a bit and sometimes that's my downfall. I overwork them. But another tool you can use is bring in a straw and just blow the paint around and get it to where it's compositionally like you like it. Now I'm coming in with a popsicle stick and dipping it in some of my colors that I used on the board just because I want to bring some more of those colors over into this corner and balance it all out. And I, you can use all kinds of things to do this, but at this moment I'm using a popsicle stick and then you'll see I'm going to go in with a pipette and draw up some paint and then squirt it onto the board and move it around as well. I'm bringing the torch back in just to see if I can get a few things to pop out, some cells, and to move my paint around a smidge. I 
As you can see, I like to fiddle and play with it until I get it to a point where I'm willing to let it dry. What I'm doing here is taking some of the white drippings and I'm layering it back into the color to kind of dictate how I want the composition to be and separate some of the colors. And here's where I come in with the pipette and they're great just to um, suck up the paint and disperse them onto the canvas and they're also good for pulling it through and drawing it through so pretty basic tools here just need something to smash that paint with a mallet or I've even seen people use a balloon some sticks toothpicks and straws to move your paint around and have a lot of fun with it so I'm ready to let this one dry overnight before I begin the next step. So I also didn't record it, but I added a little bit of glitter to my board after my paint dried. You can use glitter glue or just glue and then pour glitter on it and wipe it off. Either way will work. And now I'm ready to resin this. And I'm using art resin today. It's a one to one ratio. Make sure you mix it up real good. And now we're going to pour it over the board and let all those colors and sparkles really pop. So spread your resin evenly around your board and make sure you're wearing gloves and a respirator never hurts. This is a non-VOC resin, but I'm pretty sensitive so I still wear a respirator most of the time when I'm working my resin. If you want more information on how to work the resin and clear coat an acrylic project, I'll put a link above for you. I also like to clear coat the sides of my project, so I'm just scraping up a little bit of clear resin that's stripped over the sides and doing just that. This is now ready to go into my cure station overnight, and look at how beautiful and sparkly and shiny it turned out the next day. Hey guys, if you like what I'm doing, please hit that subscribe button along with that little bell. That way you'll be notified when I post my next video. And again, I appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful day and happy creating.